Ain't no half step, and we're back. We're back live. You ready to get in? From the National Basketball Association, if you want to be down with the discussion, give us a call, 804-726-3430. Joining us as he does every single week to talk about the happenings in the National Basketball Association is the resident basketball expert here on Ain't No Half Stepping. It's your man, K-Dub. What's up, bruh? Nah, man, we chilling, man. How you chilling. doing? How you doing? I'm chilling, man. I'm good, man. Watching, um, watching this uh, NCAA, man. You, you best s- time of the year. Best time of the year. Thank was, you, thank was, you. Yeah, I mean, you know, you and Carl, uh, you and Big Rube agree on that. That's one thing that, you know, I've known you a long time, and you know, that's just not how I get down. I, I watch it, I'll enjoy it, but I don't get the thrill out of the NCAA that I get uh, out of the you NBA. Sound like a, you sound like an angry old man. I'm always, I always sound like an angry old man. That's the, you know, I sit on my soapbox and I and I rant. That's what I do. But we're not gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about what we came here to talk about. And and to be honest with you, if you're listening to us right now, there's only really one thing that's on my mind right now that's got me fired up. And I hear K Dub, he's already laughing at me right now because can we, can I think hold off on that? I think he's equally fired up. I want to know when can we fire Mike D'Antoni? Tell us how you really it, feel. It really comes down to the it really comes down to the coach in my opinion. And that's a majority of the people that I know that's Knicks fans as well. You know, um I mean it's a lot of different things. I mean it's a lot of different things from the coaches aspect. You have a coach who uh if you look at the Philadelphia game, Carmelo Anthony uh pretty much got into a groove for the middle part of the first quarter all the way to the end, when the second quarter started. He was sitting on the bench, took him straight out of his floor of the game. You look at, um, you know, you compare the point guard situation right now, Jeremy Lin. Yeah, he's averaging 15.6 assists a game, but against Philadelphia, how is it that he shot more, he had more field goal attempts than Amari Stoudemire and Carmelo Anthony? How is it that you have a guard that over a period of time averaged six turnovers a game? There is not one team in the league, all the way down to Charlotte, who's six and thirty-four, that their starting point guard has averaged five or more turnovers a game. I believe most may be uh, actually it probably is Jeremy Lin, who's averaging four point three turnovers a game. Um, you you got you know they don't necessarily run plays. His particular uh, offensive scheme is seven seconds or less, and it's primarily a lot of pick and roll. You don't put a lot. He doesn't put a lot of his players in good positions to score. That's why you have situations where individuals such as Carmelo Anthony is frustrated because he may not be getting the ball in certain parts of the floor. You know. Now, let me not say that this is all Dan Tony's fault. You know, I believe Amara Stoudemire not playing over the summer, not really being coming back in basketball shape. I believe Carmelo Anthony um, didn't come back in basketball shape. Uh, Landry Fields didn't come into basketball shape. You see how long it took Baron Davis to get into the flow of things. So, I mean, that, it, that along with all of that, it's a lot of other stuff as well. Let me ask you this, K-Dub. I always equate a basketball team to be like a Super Friends kind of thing, a Batman, a Robin, a Superman, Green Lantern. Who on your team is trying to step up and be Batman, but then also have that Robin and, you know, kind of be like that role player? You got Jeremy Lin. Well, if, of course, he's the floor general. I mean, honestly, he's your point guard. He's supposed to get you the ball. But who's going to step up and want to really be behind him when you have a Carmelo Anthony? Hey, when listen, you, that goes to show you that that's just that that comment what you just made is basically for anybody that's just that's new to this Knicks situation. First off, first and foremost, Jeremy Lin is a little bit above average point guard. He's not the Batman. He's not even the Robin. He's basically the engine in the Batmobile right now. You know what I'm saying? Your Batman and Robin on any particular night is going to be Amari Stoudemire and Carmelo Anthony, whoever may be in that particular position to be Batman if you want to if you want to so say that is. But it's a team thing. You know what I'm saying? You just need a point guard who's going to come in, 
uh, keep the defense honest by shooting, you know, getting himself as well as other teammates involved, getting Carmelo in those particular spots that best do him, to get um, Amari Stoudemire from the elbow down, to penetrate and give it off to Tyson Chandler, Tyson Chandler playing defense, getting rebounds, tipping, so on and so forth, hitting Landry Fields for open shots, so on and so forth. So everybody that's all like, oh, Jeremy Lin is the, uh, you know, second coming of Walt Clyde Frazier, and he's going to be a Hall of Fame and all that. Knock it off. You're not You're not watching. You're not attuned to what's going on with the Knicks team. Yeah, it was good for a minute, but right now, like I said, he's an average point guard, probably a little bit better, more than average point guard, but he's not the Batman, nor is he the Robin. You know, K-Dub, this is what I got to say. And I told you I had something to say. You may not agree or whatever. First of all, I am about 30% feeling that this is D'Antoni's fault. And I think the other 70% is Knicks management. I understand you want to get your big three and try to do all this. Let's just be real with this. Stoudemire and Anthony can't coexist. That's how it is. There's no reason why a 6'11", 260-pound dude is taking 15-foot jumpers. There's no reason why Carmelo Anthony is not driving to the hole, getting that foul, going to the free throw line. You know, you can see here, you blame all this on Jeremy, the whole Lynn Sandy and whatever. I'm not saying Jeremy Lynn is the second coming of Magic Johnson or anything. However, every time they put the quote-unquote Len Sandy crew into the game, New York plays that much better. All right, let me get into this one. Well, let me, hold on, hold on. Let me. Yeah, yeah, that's why. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, uh, let me get this one because I, I don't want to be disrespectful, but for but but like you said, the uh, you and I as Nick fans, and like you said, you just can't. You came out to us today <laughs> as a Nick fan, uh, which which I appreciate. I watch every single Nick game. And I could tell you in all sincerity that Big Rube ain't got no idea what he's talking about. You're saying. None. Not a thing. When you have players of the caliber of Amari Stoudemire and Carmelo Anthony, players who prior to this season have been touted as being two of the top ten players in the league, you can't look me in the face with a straight face and tell me they can't play together. Figure it out. You know whose job it is to figure it out? It's the coach. You can't tell me that you can't figure out a way to have one of the top three dominant power forwards in the league coming into this season. You can't figure out how to get him to play with one of the top three small forwards in the league. You can't figure that out. That's not a player thing. That's a coach thing. That's a coach thing. And here's the other thing. If you watch them, there's a reason why Amari Stoudemire is shooting them jump shots. It's because he's physically not right. Now, what is it that's not right about him? Hey, you can ask 10 people, you get seven answers. But there's something physically not right with him. Maybe it's the back that he never got re, you know, healed from when he hurt it in the playoffs against Boston last year. Maybe it's the knees that, you know, nobody as a Knicks fan expected him to play the five years they signed him to. If we got three, four years out of it, cool. But maybe it's the knees coming out. But I'll tell you something. Maybe it's the fact that Dan Tony's system isn't suited for a guy with bad knees to be running up and down the court like he's a deer a hundred times a game. Maybe that's what it is. And but I don't know that I'm going to sit here and put it on Jeremy Lin, the playmaker, the great Jeremy Lin, who all of a sudden the Knicks decide they want to play ball because Jeremy Lin fell his ass out the D-League. Now all of a sudden they're a great team. We see it. They are who we th- they're they not who we thought they were. Because if you look at the talent on this team, there's no reason they should be six games. Six under 500. And that's a, that's about hustle. If you watched last night's game, they got out rebounded every single loose ball. Yep. They should have won that game. Yep. They should have. And all they had to do was hustle. Hustle. And whose fault is that? The coach? That's the coach. That's not the coach. That's the fault. coach. You know why? I disagree. You know why? You know whose job that is? Motivate your players. Now you would think that because you make $20 million a year that you would be motivated. But the, he's lost the team. He's lost the team. You know why? Because they want to be in the stands with us chanting fire to Antony. That's why. 
But I disagree with that because he didn't lose a team when they were 9-1 and one in 10 games. He actually resurrected the team, and they were playing well. Once Stoudemire got back, and hold on, K-Dub. Once yeah. your stars let got him, back, let him, let him finish. Hold on, K-Dub. Let him, hold, hold on, K-Dub. Let him finish. Dub, dub, dub. Let him finish his point. Let him finish his point. Let him finish his point. I'm saying I'm not saying that the Knicks team was was the greatest, but you know what? That Knicks team beat the Lakers, and you know the Lakers aren't terrible. So anybody who thinks the Lakers are terrible, they're they're crazy in the head. Now that Knicks team that we so we so quietly say, well, that's who they thought we were. You know, I talked about Landry Fields for like two minutes that I hated that dude, and I still don't like that dude. But you know what? That dude comes to play every day. The, two, the people who don't come to play is Stoudemire and Anthony. Clearly, I don't know clearly, why. Clearly, you're not watching the game. I think because you're blinded. Because Landry Fields falls asleep in the middle of games. In the middle of games. He because he went from but having 30 minutes but a game to like 15. No, but you just said that he comes to play every game. Hey, Dub, pick up there, man. Man, I think y'all blinded. Hey, Dub, pick up there. 